<laughs> you guys, if you had to deal with what I deal with mentally, emotionally, psychologically, you would you would act this weird too. Okay? <laughs> I'm just letting you know. I'm not I'm not I'm not uh playing victim or trying to make it seem like my life is so terrible or my life is so hard um I don't downplay or discredit what I experience okay but I also don't make it all about me because I hate it when people do that and that is like a common theme I've said it before and I'll say it again because it bears repeating. People that that go online and they lash out and get really upset about various news stories and various tragedies and uh you know uh deaths <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that people don't die I'm saying that that uh, well I, things don't happen the way that they say they happen let's just say that okay let's just say that and uh, I've noticed that people have this habit of going online and, and just immediately posting their opinion about whatever tragedy, whatever death, you know, whatever horrible thing they think happened. They just post about it immediately. And they're like, this is fucked up. Meh, 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 meh. You see? You see? This is this is why the Republican Party is fucking bad. Okay? This is why. <laughs> This is why Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is a piece of shit. This is why, you know, like, people just can't wait to lash out and, and spout their terrible conception of what's going on, you know? And none of these people have any idea, you know? And so, personally, I just find it obnoxious, but... These people, they don't really care. They don't really care about what's going on. They don't really care about other people's tragedies. They don't really care if somebody dies. You know, that's not what concerns them. They just can't wait to whine about it. They can't wait to vicariously play the victim through some news story. Okay? This is not empathy. This is narcissism. This is narcissism. This is people that think that they know everything that can tell everybody else that they're horrible they're horrible because they're not them they're not them with their stupid opinion and their stupid perspective and their stupid habits and their stupid ideas and <laughs> ideas they don't have ideas but like <laughs> I mean it is very frustrating living in a world amongst people like this but I realized that you know just not doing it is such a beautiful thing. Just just not being on Facebook. It's like I can pat myself on the back for knowing that Schmuckerberg is a piece of garbage. It's like I knew that. I knew that a long time ago. Hold on one second. What are you doing? I'm filming. What are you filming? Put me in. Hello. This is Lexi. This is Lexi. She looks like a cat. No, I don't. Yeah, you okay, do. Okay, come on. Come on. We got milkshakes. Max is gone. Okay. We need help. Okay. Let's go. All right. Isn't she pretty? She's pretty. <laughs> She's a sweetheart. She's a very smart person. Um, I told her that. 
I said, <laughs> she, she's really cool because uh, she's one of the few women you could be honest with. I told her, uh, I was like, you know, when I first met you, I thought you were a fucking idiot. I thought, I thought you were one of those uh, typical, you know, Gen Z kids that just stares at their phone. But, you know, you're actually pretty smart. You know what's funny? Like, people always, like, react like they're, they're kind of shocked that I'm that honest, but then they appreciate it. They're like, oh, wow, thanks. <laughs> it's like a backhanded compliment. I, I don't mean it that way, though. I really mean it like I'm being honest with you because I think you can handle it. And, I mean, she understood because she knows that the majority of her generation is exactly the, like I just described. So, oh, yes. So I'm getting ready to go to work at my job that I've been at um, on and off for like 12 years. I'm a very loyal person, so it's uh, it's hard for me to leave. I wonder how much of it is loyalty and, and how much of it is just my abandonment issues, you know. Food for thought for me if I feel like eating today, you know. I might munch on something else though. Might munch on something else, like a hamburger, before they're all gone. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, there's no consistency at all. Like, I feel like that's what's making everybody crazy, is that there's, there's, there's not much to hold on to right now, because everything's so up in the air. Which is why, you know, for me personally, um, with mental, my mental health, it was imperative for me to, to maintain work. It was imperative for me to... I hate cars like that. I absolutely hate cars like that. It's fucking annoying. They just want attention all the time. It's like, ugh, take your borderline personality somewhere else, you know? <laughs> anyway. This is consistency, okay? This is stability. I hold on to that. I hold on to that. And I also try to hold on to my jobs, as shitty as they are. I, I try to hold on to them because it's good to have that. It's good to have that network. It's good to have that foundation, that base of, um, you know, some people, places, and things that, that are reliable, you know? So, just letting you know. Just letting you know uh, the right way to look at things. Anyway. <laughs>